Yeah, okay, so to repeat the question, I gave a lecture called, uh, a series of lectures called The Proof That Islam Is The Truth. And in this I talked about scientific miracles. And, uh, and the brother is saying, is it true that you have changed your position on this? I said, yes, it's true, I've changed my position. But the change is a, is a small but important change. So let me explain. Let me explain. If you study the scientific methodology, so what does that mean? What is science? What is the way that a scientist comes to a conclusion? They have a particular way they use. It's not just random. <laughs> they use a particular method. Right? So the method is a method of observation. They make an observation. They do an experiment. So they have an idea. They do an experiment to see if this idea is actually material, comes through in reality. And they will repeat this experiment. And they will get others to repeat this experiment. So it's not just about one person doing it. Others will repeat this experiment in different situations or they will look at the data and review the data. So the more the experiment is repeated and the result comes the same, the more they are convinced that the conclusion is the right conclusion. That's science. So whether it's an experiment or whether it's an observation, this is how science works. Now I want to give you an example. Imagine I have a theory and all science, this is very important, there is no such thing as a scientific fact. It doesn't exist. Because science doesn't deal with facts. Science deals with theories. So science by its nature is ilm of dhan. Now we think the opposite because we think science has done so much. But science by its very nature is speculation. It's dhan. It's uncertain. This is why they're always changing their theories. One, ten years ago they have a theory. Now they have a completely different theory. That contradicts it. Or not contradicts it, but it's very different. And scientists are proud of this. They say, yes, this is science. We are always open to new ideas, new data, new information. Right? This is the nature of science. So if, if I have a theory, here is my theory. All sheep are white. This is my theory. All sheep are white. And I go to Wales, where I live. Yeah, near, I don't live in Wales, near Wales, and there's lots of sheep. And every sheep I see, I see a sheep, white, white, white. 10,000 sheep, every one of them is white. So I go away thinking, I've seen 10,000 sheep, everyone was right, it supports my theory. Until I go and I see a black sheep. And then my theory does not exist anymore. Okay, no, all sheep are not white. So I thought it was a scientific proof. I have 10,000 experiments showing that sheep are white. This actually used to be, they used to think all swans were white until in Australia they found black swans. Right? So science is only as good as the moment until they find something that contradicts it. Because this is science is all based upon observation. And that observation can change at any time. So I know this is, taking, this is important though to understand. So because science is ilm al and its theories are always changing, First of all, to say scientific miracle is a contradiction. You can't have a scientific miracle because science and miracles are two totally different things. You can't have a scientific miracle because science and miracles are two completely different things. So it doesn't mean anything. Even the term scientific miracle doesn't mean anything. You don't understand what is science and you don't understand what is miracle if you put them two together. That's the first problem. The second problem is, it's not right for us to subject ilm al-haq, ilm al-yaqeen, which is the Qur'an. The Qur'an is complete truth. It is perfect truth. How can you subject the Qur'an to ilm al -dhan? How can you make science the criterion through which you decide whether the Qur'an is true or not? That's wrong. And many scholars have always been saying this. Even to be fair, Zakir Naik, he's always said, the Qur'an is a book of signs, not a book of science. Yeah? So this is important. 
Now here's the other problem. Tafsir. Tafsir is something fixed. We can't make a new tafsir of Qur'an. Tafsir is either understood according to the meaning of the word in the Arabic language as it was understood in the time of the Prophet and the Qur'an is explained by the Prophet or by the ijma, by a consensus. After this is no tafsir. Right? So for us to come and say, this ayah here that talks about have not the unbelievers seen the universe were, was one, you know, the, the ayah in Surah Al-Anbiya, I think it's verse uh, 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To say this is the Big Bang, where's the tafsir? Did Ibn Abbas say this? Did Qurtubi say this? Did, which Mufassir said this is the Big Bang? Who explained it that this means that? So unless you can find something definitive, you don't have the right to say that. You can't say that. So we have to be very careful about this. Right? We can't say this verse means this. What we can say, and this is now my, the new approach, so it's a change in emphasis. Instead of trying to prove Islam what, you know, through the science, all we say is, look, the Quran says this, Science has, is saying this, that's very interesting. Don't you think it's interesting that there seems to be a connection, a correlation between, that's as far as we go. Do you understand? And, and that's fine. Because we have to be careful as Muslims. We must be very, very careful. Why? Because this has happened actually. We have said, oh, this scientific miracle in the Quran, and then someone came along and said, no, that's wrong. Or the science changed, or they changed their opinion then what do we say? We look silly. Yeah? So the, the, this is more, it's just a change of emphasis and a change of language. So we should be careful how we use this. It doesn't mean we can't say, Alhamdulillah, look at what the Quran is saying. It seems to, but primarily, why does the Quran talk about these things? It draws our attention to the power of Allah, to the majesty of Allah, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is controlling the universe and so on. And this is to make us make tadabbur. It's not really to have scientific facts. It's make us to ponder and reflect. But alhamdulillah, if we see that there is something that seems to agree, we can say, that's interesting. What do you think of that? Do you have a good explanation for this? You know, so that's the only difference. Yeah, it's a small but you know important difference. Yes, Jazakallah khair. And even now, Einstein is being overthrown now. Now they're finding a whole new theory of physics, and uh, you know they're coming up with new ideas. Not overthrown, but actually, really, it is adjusted, and you know, the yeah. Anyway, but the point being is like you said, the theories are always changing. Sometimes they throw them out altogether. The best example is Einstein is a good example for when he was developing his theory of relativity. He added something called the cosmological constant. Why? Because he asked the scientists, the astro astronomers, at the, uh, the astron not astronomy, astro astrologers, no astronomers. He asked the, I always get, he asked the astronomers at the time, is the universe static or is it changing? And their consensus that they lived it, that the universe was static, unchanging. And he called this his biggest mistake because his theory predicted that the universe was not static. The universe was changing. It had a beginning, it had an end. But the scientific consensus at the time was that the universe was static. So he changed his theory to fit that consensus. And then they found that the scientific consensus was wrong. This is a perfect example of how science changes. They say one thing and then they say a little, almost the exact opposite. So we don't subject uh, our Quran to science. This is the main thing. Yeah? Barakallahu feek.